the island analogy goes like this. And it, it's tempting, you know, it's always tempting for me, and it's, it'll probably be tempting for you if you try this, to jump to the conclusion and, and quick point it out. And I would say hesitate as long as you can to point out the punchline of this exercise. And there are different variations. That my, my favorite one is this. And you can do this one-on-one -on -one or you can do it with a room full of people. I've done it with a room full of people on several occasions. Where you say, all right, we're in this scenario. You and like everybody in here, a total of 100 people, everybody in here plus some. Um, we're on a plane. We're all pretty much strangers. We crash onto an island. Plane's destroyed. It's a big enough island. We have, we have fresh water and there are trees and stuff and there's resources. We're not all going to die of starvation in a week. Um, but we're it. We have no means of communication. Most of us are strangers. We have almost nothing on us. Like our phones don't work. We have whatever technology happened to be in our pockets and all our electronic devices are worthless because we don't have chargers and all that. What do we do? And the first question is sort of just to start people thinking about, imagine you're actually in that scenario where you don't know if you're gonna be found. You don't know where you're gonna live, how you're gonna eat. Immediately, it's scary. The scenario forces them out of their comfort zone, forces them out of the familiar um, things that they're always used to. That is very important because there's also a psychological tendency that whatever someone is used to, whatever they're accustomed to, they will feel comfortable in, including a war zone. There are people who live in war zones and they stay there because they don't know what's out there. There are people who live in just horrendously dangerous, violent, nasty neighborhoods, and they stay there because they don't know what's out there. There are people in violent relationships where they get physically abused on a regular basis, and often they don't run away, and part of it is because they're not sure what life would be like if they left. This is familiar. I know this. I know what to expect. I know this house. I know this person. I know this. I know this life. Out there is the big, scary unknown. And fear of the unknown is one of the hardest things to overcome. So the first thing that the, the island analogy exercise does is immediately throw them into fear of the unknown. You don't have a choice. You don't have 911. You don't have running home to mommy. You don't have authority to run to. It's you and a bunch of strangers on an island. And then I will usually ask some very basic questions about like, well, how do you think people should behave? Um, like, let's say a bunch of people say, well, I think we should focus on making a signal fire. And a bunch of other people say, well, maybe nobody will even see that. I think we should focus on getting food and finding water because that's a little more important. And so I would ask something. I mean, there's, there's a million different ways to ask the question, so I'm just sort of giving some examples. Um, so I would ask something like, well, do you think that the people who want to do a signal fire should go to a signal fire and the people who want to build huts or look for water should do that or should like people the majority make the minority do whatever they think is important like well 60% of us think we water is more important and 40% want to do the, the signal fire do you think it's okay for them to force those people to help you know look for water or do you let them go do what they want to do and almost everybody says, you let them do what they want to do. That's kind of silly. You know, we, we can do this, they can do that. We don't all have to do the same thing. And, and so I start, I start with just the basics of, of human behavior and, and interaction. And, and then I'll say something like, let's, let's say, you know, most of us probably don't know how to start a fire without matches or a lighter. The, and I, I would ask the crowd, does anybody in here know how to start a fire without a lighter? And, and, a couple people will. Does anybody know how to build a shelter that will actually keep rain out? Because most people don't. I mean, they could try something and it'll probably drip on them all night. And, and then if there happen to be a few people that know how to do that, I say, all right, who here would be willing to make the deal where they say, okay, guy who knows how to build a shelter that keeps rain out, um, I will help you build yours if you help me build mine. Who would think that's okay? And everybody thinks, yeah, that's perfectly fine. And some people might say, you know, I don't particularly need that. I think I can build my own, and I might help that person. And then I'll throw in some, some complications and some challenges. And let's say when the plane crashed, there was a pregnant woman who broke both her legs. So you know she's not getting her own food. She's not building her own shelter for a while. She can't do anything. Um, 
And I may ask, like, is anybody a doctor or a nurse or know enough to maybe set the legs? And, and you know, who might be best qualified to do that? And then who would be willing to help a little bit to gather food for her and help build a shelter? And almost always, almost everybody says, yeah, I can chip in a little bit of time in between building my own. Um, and I keep throwing out problems of, okay, let's say we've been there for a while and, and people are interacting and we have some people building huts and they found some, some um, fresh water and they drank it and nobody died from it. And now let's say somebody figured out how to fashion a fishing rod and somebody else got caught stealing fish that the other guy just caught. And you know it and he admits it and he's all grumpy about it and, but he got caught. What do you do about it? And I'll use this example. I mean, there's, again, there's a million different questions you can ask and scenarios you can bring up. But I like the fish thief example because, well, I'm not even going to tell you why because until I explain to you what happens. So I say, all right, we have a fish thief. Somebody's holding him. It's like, we, I caught him. I saw him stealing him. And he admits it. We all know he stole the, the fish. What are we going to do about it? And the first step has nothing to do with the answer. The first step has to do with people thinking, wow, what, what, what do we do about it? Just taking on the responsibility of understanding there's not 911, there's not cops, there's not an authority to handle it, there's just us people. So what do we, do we as individuals feel individually justified in doing about the, the fish thief? And I'll, you know, when I have a bunch of time, I will let the discussion just, just wander around. And some people will say, well, we need, to, we need for there to be a deterrent so he doesn't steal fish. And other people will say, well, maybe we should start by talking to him and asking him why he felt the need to steal fish. It's not that hard to catch a fish. And so there's the whole range of attitudes that, you know, that, that matches the whole range of human personalities of some people are like, you know, that guy has a problem. And other people are like, that guy is the problem. Like, we have to create a deterrent. And people talk back and forth of how to deal with it. And then I'll throw in a tougher example of, OK, let's say we've been there a little bit longer. And some guy is just, he can't handle the situation it's too much. He's losing his marbles, and he tried to kill somebody. What do we do with him? And we have him, and everybody saw him try it. And like, OK, somebody's holding him, so he's not a threat at the very moment. What are we going to do? And the purpose of the exercise is not to find the answer, because there isn't a the answer. There's individuals thinking for themselves, what would I do about that? In intentionally inconvenient, uncomfortable situations. I wouldn't want to have to deal with that. And the reason people want a ruling class is so when anything uncomfortable comes up, they can dial 911 and have somebody else deal with it. They want a ruling class because they don't want to be responsible adults. They want to be immature children who can go, teacher, teacher, Johnny did something mean, and that's all they have to do. But in the island analogy, there isn't that option. There's nobody to whine to. And to me, the answer is, you know, the answer that people come up with, I don't even care. The process of them thinking about it, basically, sometimes for the first time in their lives, exercising the part of their brain that thinks, all right, if it's just up to me, what do I do? What do I feel justified in doing? And it's uncomfortable, and I want it to be uncomfortable. Because a free world is uncomfortable because we are responsible because we're at the top. We are the top. We're also the bottom. We're all one level. We're all there is. There is nothing above us. And the beauty, the, so, so the downside is it's scary and it's uncomfortable and you're responsible. And you're like, what are we going to do with a fish thief? Like, I'm not going to kill the guy for stealing a fish, but we kind of have to do something. But... Uh, but just exercising the feeling of responsibility, like it's up to me and whatever I choose, it's on me. I can't say I was following orders from somebody. You know, he's giving me orders. And we can all say, well, what do we think should be done? But whoever actually does it doesn't imagine, you know, they don't get a badge first. So they don't imagine that they have some magical powers and, and I'm, you know, I'm a representative or something. It's just sort of we're all people and we're all talking about what do we do about the fish thief? So the downside is the discomfort of responsibility. And here's the upside. I'll, I'll jump to the punchline here. 
So I do these events and we talk and talk and I throw in different scenarios and problems and challenges and ask them all these things. Never once has anybody in any of the groups suggested a government solution to any of them. Never. No Republican, no Democrat, nobody has ever suggested a government solution. So what I do after they've had rational discussions and talking about things, talking things out, I suggest the government version. And the response is that people laugh. Because when you hear it literally expressed, it's stupid and everybody knows it. All voters know it, all statists know it. For example, I say, all right, we have this fish thief and he stole fish. Okay, here's my proposed solution. You know, you've been talking about your ideas, so I'll propose this and we'll see how many people like this. We'll take him, we'll put him in a cage, and then I'm going to take fish from you and you have to give me those fish or I will hurt you and I will give them to him to eat in the cage. <laughs> Notice the chuckling. Status chuckle too because it's that stupid. That is the government solution to a thief. Put him in a cage and then give him stolen property for the length that he's in the cage. And when you hear it literally, absolutely everybody sees how stupid it is. And nobody ever says, yeah, let's do that. Because they instinctive, that, that's so obviously against what they really believe in and who they really are and what their values are like. Now, another, another reason the island analogy is effective is because the scenario happens outside of their country and the authority structure that they were raised in. Because they're taught to believe in and bow to a particular authority. You know, Americans are taught the United States government, the Constitution, the law of the land, yada, yada, yada. They are very willing to say, those people over there in some other country with some nasty tyranny, they have the right to disobey. They might even have the right to revolt, be criminals and terrorists and have a rebellion, be traitors and all sorts of fun stuff. But not me. I am loyal to my master. Because they weren't taught to feel loyalty to some other regime. They were taught to feel loyalty to their regime. So one of the reasons the island analogy works is, I just took you outside of this regime. So this is now the question. There is no authority that you've been taught to obey. There's no authority at all there. And nobody makes a new one. Nobody says we need to appoint a master who has the ability to hurt anybody who disobeys him. Because that's obviously patently stupid. And so, and you can, you can do these things as long as you want, and you'll never hear somebody suggest the government version of, of anything, of welfare, of police.